tools, big fish never swam in.
Alan Turpin. Are in as the number six seed. They'll be taking on the number 11 seed, the UCF Golden Knights, with 20 wins. Connecticut comes in as the number three seed, finishing at 21 and 11. Foreman comes in to face them at number 14 with 18 wins in the tournament championship of the Southern Conference. Our number seven seed is from the Big East, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the Big Dance. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Providence Friars, who were second in their conference, finishing at 20 and 12. Next up is the number two seed, the California Golden Bear, are the conference tournament champions from the Pac-10. They'll be going up against the number 15 seed, the Towson Tigers, with 17 wins. This is their third appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. There are going to be some incredible matchups in the later rounds of this bracket as the top seeds can avoid the early upsets. We can look forward to some real heavyweight battles. Next up, we'll take a look at the South Regional. The Kentucky Wildcats are the top seed, finishing at 20. 23 and 11. They won both the regular season and conference tournament titles in the SEC. They'll take on the Oakland Grizzlies, the number 16 ranked team. This will be their second appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. Gonzaga comes in as the number 8 seed, finishing at 18 and 15. Kansas comes in to face them as number 9 with 19 wins and a chance to make believers out of any doubters they might have. UC Irvine enters the field as the number 5 seed from the Big West. This marks their first appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. They'll be getting ready to face the number 12 seed, the Creighton Blue Jays. Finished the season with 17 wins. The UC Irvine Anteaters suffered a big upset in their conference tournament, but they've got to leave that behind. Sometimes getting a loss like that out of the way before the NCAA tournament can actually help you. It can relieve some pressure and help the players get their focus back. Memphis comes in as the number four seed, finishing at 21 and 11. They'll take on the 13th seed from the Big West, the Titans of Cal State Florida, with 17 wins. And now the number six seed, the Air Force Falcons, come into the tournament after finishing second in their conference during the regular season and were semifinalists in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Horned Frogs of TCU, who were third in their conference, finishing at 17 and 12. The Villanova Wildcats are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Sam Houston State Bearcats, with 15 wins. Next up is the number seven seed, the Texas Tech Red Raiders, are the conference tournament champions from the Big 12. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Arizona Wildcats, with 16 wins. They return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. Our number two seed is from the Big 10, the Wisconsin Badgers, who are rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the Big Dance. They're going to play the number 15 seed, the Charleston Southern Buccaneers, who came in first in their conference tournament finishing at 16 and 12. Some of the lower seeds in this bracket have the ability to not only compete with the high seeds, but win a few games. The potential for a Cinderella or two in this bracket is definitely there. On to our third bracket of the day. Let's take a look at the Midwest region. New Mexico Lobos are the top seed, finishing at 25 and 6. They were winners of the regular season championship in the Mountain West Conference. They'll take on the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions, the number 16 ranked team. This marks their first appearance in the NCAA tournament in team history. Our number 8 seed is from the Big 12. The Oklahoma Sooners were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the Big Dance. They're going to play the number 9 seed, the Georgia Bulldogs who were semi-finalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 17 and 12. The Texas El Paso Minor are in as the number five seed. They'll be taking on the number 12 seed, the Yale Bulldog, with 15 wins. UCLA enters the field as the number four seed from the Pac-10. It's yet another appearance in the brackets for a school that's no stranger to the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed, the Fresno State Bulldog. Finish the season with 18 wins. The UCLA Bruins are a team that is just so powerful and strong up front. I would put their front court up against just about any other team in the nation right now. It's always good to have strong guard play. But if you ask most coaches, I guarantee you they take the good big man over the good little man most time. Their interior play should serve them very well in this competition. Tennessee comes in as the number six seed, finishing at 20 and 14. 
and they take on the 11th seed from the Atlantic Sun Conference, the Belmont Bruins, with 20 wins. And now the number three seed, the Virginia Cavaliers, come into the tournament after finishing second in their conference during the regular season and finish second in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 14 seed, the Colgate Raiders, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 18 and 12. Next up is the number seven seed. The Arkansas Razorbacks have established themselves as one of the best teams from the SEC. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Georgetown Lions, with 18 wins. They return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. Xavier comes in as the number two seed, finishing at 23 and 10. Coppin State comes in to face them at number 15, with 18 wins, in the tournament championship of the MEAC. Looking into the future a little bit, this bracket looks poised for a titanic matchup in the regional final. The top two seeds can take care of business in the first three rounds. We have the possibility of a classic Elite Eight meeting. And finally, let's have a look at the West Regional. The Duke Blue Devils are the top seeds, finishing at 22 and 11. They were winners of the regular season championship in the ACC. They'll take on the St. Peter's Peacock, the number 16 ranked team. This is their third appearance ever in the NCAA. CAA tournament. Next up is the number eight seed, the Drake Bulldogs, are the regular season champions from the Missouri Valley Conference. They'll be going up against the number nine seed, the Louisville Cardinals, with 22 wins. They return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. Arizona State comes in as the number five seed, finishing at 19 and 12. And they will take on the 12th seed from the Northeast Conference, the St. Francis Red Flag, with 18 wins. Michigan comes in as the number four seed, finishing at 22 and 12. Georgia Tech comes in to face them at number 13 with 17 wins in the tournament championship of the ACC. Our number six seed is from the Big East, the Cincinnati Bearcats, who are rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the Big Dance. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the away team, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 21 and 10. The Aggies of Texas a and are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Temple Owls, with 15 wins. And now the number seven seed, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, coming to the tournament after finishing seventh in their conference during the regular season and finished second in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Boston College Eagles, who were fourth in their conference, finishing at 16 and 14. Enters the field as the number two seed from the Pac-10. This marks their 10th appearance in the NCAA tournament in team history. They'll be getting ready to face the number 15 seed, the Sacramento State Hornets. Finish the season with 14 wins. The Oregon Ducks will be an extremely dangerous team in this tournament, mainly because they have such terrific veteran leadership. Coaches love when they have guys on the floor that have been around the block a few times because they don't get rattled. They play with composure. I look at the experience of this team as something that could put them over the top. On the surface, I have to say this regional might be the most difficult of the four. Certainly the depth of quality teams here is very impressive. Whoever emerges from this bracket will go through some battles. What are your thoughts on our top 16 seeds, Clark? Maybe I haven't agreed with the selection committee every year, but I think they did a great job this time. The top 16 looks just about right to me. New Mexico is the softest of the top seeds. I'm not going to say exactly when they'll go down, but if I had to pick a number one team that won't be at the Final Four, it would be them. Now, let's bring the conference picture into focus. The Big East gets 18. The Big 12 with 5. Out of the ACC, the Pac-10 gets five teams. What a down here for the non-power conference. We're used to seeing at least one of those conferences compete on the level of the power conference, but not this year. And let's not forget the team out of the Big West. For a small conference, they competed at a very high level this year. Those teams could be the place to look if you're trying to find a Cinderella story in the tournament. I'm surprised there were so few bids for the teams in the A-10. It was an especially disappointing year for that conference. Usually, you can count on a few of the nation's elite teams coming out out of there. But this was a season where very few of those teams could maintain any type of positive momentum. We showed you the bubble teams before, but now that we know who's in and who's out, what do you think of the selections, Clark? Providence. And a few quality wins this season that made them stand out above the other bubble teams. And that's probably how they punched their ticket to the tournament. Those wins over top 20 teams go a long way. While those teams are celebrating getting into the tournament, let's take a look at the other teams who are on the short end of the stick. And double to the finish line coming down the stretch. And that's not the way to close out the season if you're hoping for an at-large beat. 